Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'm going to show you a really easy method of using an inexpensive gamepad controller to fly your DJI Spark. Now I've been thinking about this for a couple of months and I've been down in the basement tinkering with a lot of different solutions that didn't work out. And really what I was trying to accomplish was to add joystick control to the basic model of the Spark. And if you remember, the Spark was released in two versions. It came out as the basic, which had the Spark, a battery, a cable, a charger, and a couple other accessories. And then the deluxe version, which was called a Flymore combination, which included even more accessories, a really nice carrying bag, and this wonderful remote. If you went for the Flymore combination, this remote turn this thing into a monster of a quad. It really allowed you to fly a lot of further. It gave you the full quad experience because you've got joysticks and controls for the camera and other things. And even though both versions were a lot of fun to fly and you could use gesture control on both, a lot of my subscribers bought the less expensive version because it was still a fairly expensive quad, but it had a lot of sophistication built into it. And they really wanted to add this joystick experience, myself included. So I've tried everything. I tried those suction cup joysticks that stick on the front of your phone and they kind of work, but they don't work real well. They're not real responsive. I found that on hot days or cold days, they popped off the front of the phone. So even though they kind of worked, I couldn't do a clip on them because I couldn't recommend them. So until now, I've not been able to find any kind of solution that would work. What's changed is DJI, brilliant company that they are, just released a new version of firmware. So they came out with the version 4.1.18, which is the DJI Go firmware, which is actually the application itself. If you upgrade to that version of the application, you may not notice it, but if you read the notes, and I'm a nerd, so I read all the notes, the release notes for any firmware that comes out, it talks in there about DJI adding MFI support for gamepads. Now, you may not know what that is if you do great, but if you don't, what MFI means is that it's been certified by Apple as an external device to work with their iOS, their iPhones, and their iPads. So MFI, anything that's MFI certified means the minute I power this thing up, it's going to create a Bluetooth pop or point of presence that I can then pair up with my phone. So I can tether this to my phone and have this behave as that remote. Now, that's not going to give you the same distance because this has Wi-Fi amplifiers in it and everything else to make it fly further, but it does give you that tactile experience of actually flying the quad with the joystick. So I thought, let me spend a little bit of time playing with it, getting it hooked up, and then put a clip together to explain to you guys how to do that. It's not complicated at all, and this is $120. You can find these things all over the place, and I'll put links below on Amazon, but you can find them anywhere for 30 bucks. So pretty good value and does a pretty good job of flying the quad. And I'll go through all the steps you need. It's very, very simple to do and a whole lot of fun to fly. So hang on and I'll get into it. Before we get started, there's a few things you'll need for this setup. You'll wanna make sure your Spark is on the latest firmware version, which is 01.00.0701. You'll also wanna make sure you've updated your DJI Go 4 application to the latest version, which is 4.1.18. And this is the version that enables support for third-party game controllers that are MFI certified. And then last, you'll want to pick a game controller that you want to use for the setup. Now, there's a lot of manufacturers that make these type of controllers. If you're using an iOS device, you want to make sure it's MFI certified. And for the example I'm going to show you, I've picked the Mad Cats product, which works really well with this setup. Step one involves pairing the Spark with whatever device you're going to use to fly it. In this case, that would be an iPhone or an iPad, and it's done over Wi-Fi. Now, if you've flown your Spark for a while using your iPhone or your iPad already, you've created this binding and you can move on to step two. But in case you haven't, I'll go through the process. Essentially, what you're doing here is creating a relationship between your phone and the Spark that controls the flight of that Spark over Wi-Fi. To start off with, you'll open up your iPhone or your iPad to the main screen, and tap on the settings icon, and then tap on Wi-Fi. Turn on your Spark. A couple of seconds later, you should see it show up under the options. If it does, just tap it and it'll bind. If it doesn't show up under the options, you have to reset your Spark, which is really easy to do. Just hold in the power button until you hear three beeps. So once you hold in the power button, about five seconds later, you hear a single beep. Five seconds after that, a double beep. And then finally, about five seconds later, you hear a triple beep, let it go, a couple of seconds later, you should see it show up under those options. You can touch to connect. Now, the only wild card here is the first time you do that, you're going to need the password of the Spark to create that binding. 
and that password is located on a label inside the battery compartment. So before you start this step, you might want to pop the battery out, take a picture of that label so when you're going through the process you can actually remember that password or just write it down to make it easy. It is a little bit tricky. Some of the letters inside there look like numbers and vice versa, so be very careful when you're writing that down that the L's aren't actually ones. In the second step, we're going to pair the game controller to your iPhone or your iPad over Bluetooth. Now, because you have a wide range of choice on which game controller you use, every one of them is going to have a different way to put that controller into Bluetooth pairing mode. So read your instructions and find out what button you have to push or hold or what combination of buttons you need to actually put the controller into Bluetooth pairing mode. Once you do that, the controller is going to be sitting there looking for somebody to actually pair up with. So do that first. And once you've got it in Bluetooth pairing mode, go back to your phone or your iPad, open it up to the main screen, touch the settings icon again, and this time we're going to pick the Bluetooth option and make sure Bluetooth is turned on. The minute you do that, it'll start searching for something to pair with. Now, if your controller is already looking for a pairing, it'll come up as one of the options. At that point, just touch it, it'll bind to your phone or tether to your phone, and you're all set to go. In this section of the clip, I wanted to show you just how well one of these game controllers can fly your Spark as if it were an original remote control. Now to get this going, you'll need to do two things. Step one is to establish a Wi-Fi connection between your phone and the Spark. Once you've got that set up, you'll open up the Bluetooth menu and you'll tether the remote control to the phone. And essentially the remote at that point is going to act like your fingers dancing across the screen, but it's a whole lot more fun and easy, I guess, to fly it using the joysticks. Now I've already set that up. I haven't figured out a way to actually launch the Spark with the remote control, so I still use the on-screen launch buttons. So let me get it up in the air. All right, let me just clear a couple things here on screen and then I'll show you how she flies. All right, so essentially, I've got it up in the air now, and you can see the controls on here. This would act for your elevation, up and down, and this one is for left and right, just like your regular Spark. And if you want to rotate it, you'll spin it this way. If you want to move the camera, you'll use this joystick right here. You can use up and down for that, so I'm panning the camera down, panning the camera back up again. And again, it gives you a ton of control. One other thing I like an awful lot about it is you can actually assign special functions to some of these buttons. So I often, when I'm flying back, need to see where I'm at from a ground perspective, so I pan the camera completely down. I've reassigned that Y button to pan the camera down. So if I tap that, it'll go right down and look at the ground. If I tap it again, it'll go right back up to horizontal position. So that's just a nice way to reconfigure some of those buttons to some of your favorite functions. But you can see this thing is incredibly responsive, up and down, left and right, flies like a dream. So again, for me, for very little money, I can put one of these uh, connected to my phone through that Bluetooth connection and actually fly it as if I had the regular remote. So might be a good option if you didn't buy that Fly More kit or you don't have a remote for your Spark. And again, to land it, I'm going to put it back where I start it. Let me get it on top of that. Bring it down. Hold it a little bit. And then I'll use the land button over here, just like I did to take off. And it'll land. Oh, missed it a little bit. If you followed those steps, you should now be able to fly your DJI Spark with your favorite gamepad controller. I tested both the Mad Cats device and two other MFI certified controllers, and the good news is they all work great. The bad news is that today the Go4 application only supports MFI certified devices. Now, MFI is a standard that was developed by Apple for all their iOS devices, including the iPhone and the iPad, but it doesn't include Android devices. So you can't actually make this work with an Android device with the current version of Go 4. Because even though you can tether over Bluetooth to an Android device, the application won't recognize that as a legitimate external controller for the quad. And even though you can get around that by jailbreaking your phone or rooting an Android device and pairing that up maybe with an application off the web, I wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't want to fly with something that wasn't tested and certified by the manufacturer because you've got a lot of money invested in your quad and even though it might work in your backyard, you don't know what that controller is going to tell the application to do and have the quad fly off over the horizon. So I fully expect them to come out with expanded support in, a, in another version of Go 4 that will support the Android devices, but for the time being you can do it on Apple. Now having said that, let me editorialize a little bit. I think it's a brilliant move on their part to expand the software to allow you to do stuff like this because from a large corporation perspective, 
there's no benefit to them expanding this to include third-party devices. They're not selling you this controller. If you want to buy a controller from them, you've got to buy that proprietary controller. So the fact that their brilliant team of engineers sat down and said, look, a lot of people are asking for Bluetooth tethering support for controllers. We could build that into the firmware pretty easily. Really doesn't benefit us as a company, but it helps our consumers to expand the use of their quads. I think that's a wonderful thing, and I think it should be applauded. So I know I'm a big fan of DJI. I always talk about how benevolent I think they are in a lot of ways to the consumers once you buy a product. By releasing features like this that expand the use of that product, uh, I think is a wonderful thing. So let's just take that as a good thing for now and keep our fingers crossed that they'll support Android in the very near future. So. I hope you found this clip helpful. I, I love doing these kind of clips. I love uncovering these little nooks and crannies of development that are going on with the quads, and I'm gonna to continue to put these clips together. Like I always say, as long as you guys are finding value in them. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, drop them in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I have been cheating a little bit and out flying and swimming the, the submersibles and, and out in the field a lot, so I've had a lot of fun as we're heading into winter, but I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I've got a ton more content coming so hit that button down the bottom and join the family and again thanks so much for watching i really really enjoy putting these things together and again as long as you guys continue to watch i'll keep making them so until next time happy flying